Hello and welcome to my channel, the place where I take you on RV tours, campground tours, to hiking destinations, and so much more. Now in this video, we're going to bench test the Out Equip Pro 10,000 BTU roof mount AC by combining it with the DC House 12.8 volt 150 amp hour lithium battery, similar to the bench test we recently performed for the VLIT 12 volt AC. You can click on the link above to see that bench test. We're going to see how well the Out Equip Pro AC performs and calculate how long it will actually run on 100 amp hour of battery. I will conduct a normal bench test with an inlet air temperature set at 74 Fahrenheit and then I'll conduct a torture test in which I will heat the intake air temperature to 98 Fahrenheit. Now please note that these tests will not allow the AC to ever reach the set point temperature and therefore will represent the maximum power usage for each test. So let's start by introducing the key players in this bench test. First, the DC House 12.8 volt 150 amp hour battery. It's currently priced on Amazon for $239.99, but check the video description for a discount code. For that price, you get the lithium battery, two M8 terminal bolts, two rubber terminal protection caps, and the user manual with other miscellaneous literature. This battery does have Bluetooth and a very useful app with tons of information along with a status indicator built into the top of the battery that not only indicates approximate SOC, but also shows faults. Let's take a quick look at its specifications. As part of this bench test, I will run a capacity and power test on two different DC house 150 amp batteries and compare the results to the specifications. Also note that when choosing a lithium battery, be sure that the maximum continuous current is adequate for your application. In this case, the AC specification states a continuous current range of 21 to 58 amps and the DC house has a maximum continuous current of 120 amps. So this battery is a great choice to run this 12 volt AC system. Now let's look at the Audi Quip Pro 10,000 BTU 12 volt RV AC unit. It currently sells on Amazon for $850, but check my description for a discount. For that price, you get the AC unit, remote control, mounting brackets, user manual and installation guide, mounting hardware, power cord, ceiling gasket, interior trim panel, and insulation sponge. This AC has four cooling modes, turbo, cool, eco, and sleep, along with a heating mode and a fan only mode. For this bench test, we will be focusing on the cooling modes only. Also, this AC does not have an app, so you will need to use the remote or the AC panel itself to change any of the settings. Now let's take a look at the specifications. This bench test will focus on the power consumption and the temperature differential within each of the cooling modes. Also note that this AC is very light at only 43 pounds and is the lowest profile AC I have ever seen at only 6.3 inches high. For this test, I'll be using the Victron Energy Smart Shunt, Thermo Pro Digital Temperature Sensors, a ceramic heater to heat the air for the torture test, and a BT meter anometer. I will be running this test in duplicate, so I will also be doing a lot of battery charging. For the charging of the battery, I will be using both a lead time 3000 watt inverter charger and a Vivor 2000 watt inverter charger. Lastly, to properly capture and heat the inlet air, I created an intake duct as well as a small outlet duct shelf to set my sensor for the outlet air temperature. Of course, everything that I used will be in the description. Now, let me show you my setup. So come over here, let me show you what's going on. Back here, you'll see that I have my heater providing warm air into the duct that I made. 
I made this duct so that I could also measure the airflow going into the AC. Up front, you can see that I have a temperature gauge showing the inlet temperature of 96 degrees along with the outlet temperature of about 55 degrees. Okay, so let's let it run. Several days later. Okay, here are the results. Let's start with reviewing the results of the torture test. Now things started off great. As expected, turbo mode used the most power. However, the average power consumption of 638 watts with a temperature differential of 43 Fahrenheit was the best result I have seen from any AC. However, I would like to see a higher outlet airflow, but still a great result. From here, things got confusing. The power usage difference between normal, cool, and eco was negligible. This suggests that when the AC is trying to reach the set point temperature, the normal cooling operation and eco mode function in the same manner. In fact, it appears that eco mode simply changes the outlet air set point to 78 Fahrenheit, a fact that I verified with the manufacturer. Then came sleep mode. When I put the AC into sleep mode, the fan speed automatically dropped from level 5 to level 2, resulting in a very significant drop in the power consumption, even though the set point temperature did not change. This is unusual as an AC outlet fan alone consumes very little power. It was at this point that I hypothesized that the compressor and the outlet fan speed are linked together on this AC. This would mean that as you reduce or increase the fan speed in the cooling mode, you also increase or decrease the compressor speed and the compressor is what consumes the most power in this type of AC. To verify this, I ran a much less tortuous bench test using 74 Fahrenheit inlet air temperature, but kept the outlet temperature at 62 Fahrenheit. In this test, I simply varied the fan speed in cooling mode from low all the way to turbo. Here are the results of that test. Let's discuss the turbo mode first. As noted in the torture test, turbo mode does use more power than the cooling mode with the fan set on five. This shows that in turbo mode, the compressor is using more power. Also, just as a point of reference, with other ACs I have tested, the compressor is a function of the mode it is in, not the fan speed. But here it's obvious from the power consumption and outlet air temperature that increasing the fan speed also increases the compressor speed and therefore the power consumption. And finally, the most cooling efficient mode was sleep mode with the fan set to one. Even under torture test conditions, this mode used around 235 watts which again is a great result. So what does this all mean? In my opinion, essentially each fan speed is like a different mode as it varies the compressor speed. This may somewhat limit the AC's flexibility in real world applications. I'll need to install this AC into my van to get a better idea of its real world cooling capabilities. But as stated earlier, in turbo mode and in sleep mode, this is the most efficient AC I have tested to date. As for the DC house lithium batteries, the results here were quite impressive as well. From the table, you can see that this battery's actual power and capacity exceeded the specifications by anywhere from six to 10%. These numbers are among the most impressive numbers I have ever achieved from my lithium battery bench tests. This gives the DC house lithium battery a cost per watt of right around 11 cents. So in conclusion, the DC house 12.8 volt 150 amp hour battery is a great value and worked well as a power supply for this AC unit. The Audi Quip Pro 12 volt 10,000 BTU AC also performed well. In turbo and sleep modes, this is the most power efficient AC I have tested. So I can see why this AC is a popular choice for off-grid boondockers. However, I would like to see an app for this AC and am not sure if the fan speed being linked 
to the compressor will limit its flexibility in a real world application. So I will be installing this AC onto my adventure van in the near future and trying some real world testing. So be sure to subscribe to my channel. So I hope you found all this information useful. So please do subscribe to my channel and I will see you in many more upcoming videos. Bye for now.